welcome to Papa Chuck's shop. Well, I got three teenagers in the car and we're going to the Kinzu Bridge State Park. There's the sign. Going down by a duck road. Okay, this is a new building they built a few years ago. There's quite a few people here, I'm surprised. It's not that great a day. Okay, we're in the building, and this is a view out one of the windows, that's the bridge, what's left of it. You see some of the displays they have here. Hopefully, if you uh, care to read some of these, you can pause your video. This is the new display since I've been here. It uh, shows that the Statue of Liberty is 305 feet 6 inches. The Kenzu Bridge is 301 feet. This is what, what took the bridge down. If I'm not mistaken, this was one of the original uh, parts of the, one of the first bridges I built. And let's see, what do we got over here?
Pennsylvania, there lies a monument to the past, to the power of natural forces, and a spectacular feat of engineering. The Kinzu Skywalk, a remnant of the world-renowned viaduct. Construction of the stone piers began in 1881 under the watchful eye of Thomas Kane, a Union officer in the American Civil War and president of the New York, Lake Erie and Western Coal and Railroad Company. In only 94 days, more than 3 million pounds of iron was used to build 20 support towers. The viaduct soared more than 300 feet above the forest floor. At the time, the Kinzu Viaduct was the longest and tallest railroad bridge in the world and was called by many the eighth wonder of the world. The viaduct offered a brilliant shortcut. Locomotives could now transport lumber, oil, and coal across the deep valley in the Allegheny Wilderness to markets in Erie and Buffalo. Due to gusty winds through the valley, trains had to slow to five miles per hour when crossing the viaduct. But even at this slow speed, weekend excursion trains provided a thrilling adventure for a dollar per person. Market demands increased and trains grew larger and heavier to keep up. The iron viaduct couldn't support the extra loads. By May of 1900, only 18 years after it was built, construction began to replace the iron columns with stronger steel towers. In a few short months, the Kinzu viaduct reopened for traffic. And for 75 more years, freight and passenger trains made the slow but exciting journey across the deep valley. Eventually, heavier trains, the slow speed limit, and maintenance costs took their toll. The Kinzu Viaduct was closed to all traffic in 1959. Four years later, the Commonwealth purchased the viaduct and surrounding acreage to create Kinzu Bridge State Park. Sightseeing tours began again in 1987, bringing visitors from near and far. After decades of heavy use, the aging viaduct showed signs of wear. During a routine inspection in 2002, engineers found that sections of the viaduct had severely rusted. The park closed the viaduct to all traffic. Major restoration was underway when disaster struck. In July 2003, an F1 tornado with wind speeds reaching 100 miles per hour slammed into the Kinzu Viaduct, ripping 11 steel towers from their concrete bases. In the end, only nine towers were left, looming over the mangled remains of the viaduct. Although partly destroyed by the tornado, the park reimagined the viaduct turning this disaster into an opportunity to create a spectacular new attraction. The Kinzu Skywalk. Standing hundreds of feet in the air, 
the Skywalk offers breathtaking views of the valley below. The Kinzu Viaduct has inspired awe for more than a century. Today, you can walk along the tracks that once hauled lumber, oil, coal, and passengers and experience this extraordinary structure that has stood the test of time. Okay, we'll make our way down the path and go out on the skywalk. Okay, they have a trail that goes down there and uh, we'll go down there after we go out on the skywalk. Skywalk. Okay, guess we got the end of the skywalk to ourselves, huh? We do. They got this really nice glass thing here where you can stand on and look down through. Looks like a lot of people have been standing on it. It's kind of scratched up looking, isn't it? Used to be nice and clear. Yeah. That or they just probably haven't washed it. Alright. So this is what Mother Nature did in a few seconds time. Kind of a dull, dull, dreary day, so the... <laughs> but you do get quite a view from here. took the first picture when I started the video off, right from there. I'll head down this path a little ways and I'll show you from the underside of the bridge. From here it looks pretty innocent, but I'll tell you what, there's parts of it where you almost got to hang on to something, it's darn steep. And they got that little pea gravel stuff on there and it gets slippery, so you got to have the right shoes and stuff on or you wind up piling up. <laughs> Ok, 
Okay, this is about as far as I'm gonna go. Here's a look as close as they'll let you get. At least at this point. And here's a look back up the trail. So if you have an opportunity, you're in uh, north central Pennsylvania, be sure to check it out. There's a lot more here that I couldn't show you because I didn't want to be a real pain in, to the people that are trying to look. So just a, a, a quick check out of the, the thing and if you uh, have interest in, there, in the area, come and take a look. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And we'll see you next time.